Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Colleagues, we'll now um, are going to move into one of the most important items of the year. And this is uh, the proposed budget and capital improvement plan. Uh, the presentation from our new city manager, uh, Wanda Page, who will be making her first budget presentation. Uh, we know a lot about this budget. Uh, we've been informed in individual meetings and in small group meetings by the manager. Uh, but this is always an exciting night for us and for our community and a super important night to hear, to hear what the manager, uh, her, her priorities uh, and, and what has finally come out of this long, long budget process. So Madam Manager, welcome uh, and we're excited uh, and I see you're at City Hall uh, to make this presentation. So we're so glad to have you with us tonight uh, for your budget presentation. It's all yours. Mayor, Mayor Shul. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson, members, members of the Durham, Durham City, City Council, City, City staff, staff, and residents, residents of, Durham. of Durham. As your city manager, I am honored to be before you this evening to present my first proposed budget for the City of Durham. When I think about the past year and everything we've been through as a community and a country, it really feels more like a decade. We face so many unprecedented challenges and historic events from a global pandemic and financial uncertainty to social unrest and political, di political division. But in recent months, we've seen signs of hope. COVID-19 infection rates are on a downward trend. Vaccinations are readily available. Many restrictions have been lifted and there is a feeling of opportunity for big change. One moment of inspiration that stands out to me is the poem written and read by Amanda Gorman, the youngest inaugural poet in US history. She has a way with words that reveals a wisdom beyond her 23 years. The final line in her poem says, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. That is the theme of positivity and hope that I share with you tonight. We are at a moment of opportunity for great change for our community. As you will see in this presentation, we have many important priorities and ambitious initiatives from community safety to affordable housing to COVID-19 recovery. We have a lot we want to do. We have a lot we need to do. I have confidence that we can make real progress to make Durham the progressive and inclusive city we strive to be. It's gonna take a lot of hard work, determination, collaboration, and innovation. We have to be willing to take it on. We have to be willing to make bold moves I encourage our leaders, employees, and our community members to be the light, the spark, the fire that moves us forward as a community and to see the light in each other. We can never forget that we are all in this together. I thank Amanda Gorman for her inspirational words. Mayor Shul and city council members played a vital role in providing guidance as we discuss strategic plan goals and the entire budget development process. And we'll soon be asked to adopt the updated capital improvement plan in conjunction with the upcoming fiscal year's budget. As always, thank you for your continued support and dedication to our city. This time last year, we were still in the early months of COVID-19 and facing a lot of unknowns around the financial impact of the pandemic. While we did experience significant revenue losses, we've also seen gains that leave us in a better place than we might have expected. Let's start by looking at the key numbers proposed for fiscal year 2021-2022. The total recommended budget for fiscal year 2021-2022 is $524.6 million. 
That is a 4.38% increase from last year. This is primarily due to increases in the dedicated housing fund for affordable housing initiatives, the stormwater fund for infrastructure improvements, and the transit fund for transportation services and enhancements. The proposed general fund budget, which covers the city's core services, such as roads, parks, public safety, and more, is $235.6 million, which is a 9.8% increase from last year. The property tax rate is proposed at 55.17 cents per 100 of assessed value, which is two cents above the current combined tax rate of 53.17 cents. This will generate 15.2 million in additional revenue compared to the current fiscal year. Of this two cents increase, 1.38 cents will service the debt for the 95 million affordable housing bond that voters passed in 2019. A 0.5 cent increase to the debt service fund to fund green and equitable infrastructure projects and the remaining 0.12 cent will go to the general fund. What this means for the average homeowner is a city tax bill of about $1,291 per year or about $108 per month on a house value at the median house value in Durham of $233,927. Several fee changes are also in this proposed budget, including a water rate increase approved at the May 3rd City Council meeting and a storm water rate increase to be voted on as part of tonight's agenda. Customers will see an average water rate increase of about 3.6% and an average storm water rate increase of 51 cents per month. In addition, the City County Planning Department has proposed a variety of new fees and fee increases related to development, zoning, and permits to more accurately reflect the amount of work being performed and to simplify the digital payment process for applicants. Other minor fee increases for water management and solid waste are also included in the proposed budget. Proposed general fund expenditures include increases for personnel costs and pay increases and expenditures related to departmental budget requests. The city's fund balance helps safeguard against economic uncertainty and emergencies in the future. Our fund balance, developed and responsibly maintained over the years, has helped us weather the financial storms of the past year. And I am proud to share that the city continues to enjoy an outstanding credit rating by all of the rating agencies due in part to sound fiscal management and a strong fund balance. The proposed general fund budget uses $10.2 million of fund balance to cover a variety of one-time costs as shown here on this slide. Our complete budget document covers every detail of our revenue and spending for the coming fiscal year. This includes our core municipal services, such as roads, water, parks, and public safety, as well as the projects and initiatives that further our strategic goals. We have used a strategic plan developed with input from our employees, our residents, elected officials, and other key stakeholders to guide our budget priorities. In tonight's presentation, I will focus on several key priority areas for our organization and our community. They are community safety, affordable housing, COVID-19 recovery, employee compensation, and our capital improvement program. Equitable engagement is a foundation for how we conduct our work. And through this engagement, we have listened to our diverse community members 
to identify their needs and priorities for how their tax dollars should be spent this coming fiscal year and beyond. Despite the pandemic, we were able to host virtual budget engagement events, find new ways to educate the public about the budget process, and as always, gather vital feedback through the annual resident survey to inform our budget priorities. Because we can't cover every aspect of the budget tonight, I encourage you to review the complete proposed budget that is now available on our website at durhamnc.gov slash budget. First, I want to recognize and thank all of our essential public safety employees who work around the clock to keep us safe every day, including throughout the pandemic. The police department, the fire department, and emergency communications 911 center. This is not a small task. It takes great strength and courage to step up day in and day out to protect and serve our community. And I commend all of you for rising to this challenge, even in these difficult times. One of the highest priority areas we think about and work on daily is how best to keep all of the residents of this city safe and well. It is no secret that there is great concern about violent crime in Durham, like many other cities in America. At the same time, there are concerns about the history of policing in our country and the impact on people of color. Right now, Durham has an opportunity to lead the way in finding new, equitable, and innovative ways to keep our community safe and well. We still need policing to help protect our community, but we also need to find alternative ways to address issues that don't necessarily need a law enforcement response. We want to be a part of this reform with the goal of saving lives. The proposed budget includes the creation of a new community safety department, which will work to enhance public safety through community-centered approaches to prevention and intervention as alternatives to policing and the criminal legal system. The new department will work closely with our existing public safety departments, police, fire, and emergency communications, helping them to work focus on the work they are best trained for and equipped to handle while helping us reimagine the way we keep our community safe and well. The department will also serve as the city's main staffing resource and support for the work of the Community Safety and Wellness Task Force. Based on Research Triangle Institute's research, including a three-year 911 call for 911 call data survey, use of force analysis, Durham police officer focus groups, and input from city council, the new community safety department will implement pilot projects to explore alternative responses to issues that may not need an armed police presence and build upon our success. This department will also take on oversight and management of, this, of the city's over $1 million investment in programs, including the Bull City United Violence Interruption Program, Project Build, and Gang Intervention Strategy Initiative, which are all partnerships with Durham County government. The new department of 15 will be staffed through a combination of new position requests, current vacancies, and contract positions. In order to be the equitable and inclusive community that we want to be, we need to continue to make progress on affordable housing. Last month, we saw the opening of the Willard Street Apartments in downtown Durham, a community that is setting a new standard for affordable housing and an example of what we can accomplish through the affordable housing bond. As mentioned previously, 1.38 cents of the proposed property tax increase will go to the dedicated housing fund for debt service on the $95 million affordable housing bond that was approved by voters in 2019. 
a proposed budget of $12.7 million dedicated to affordable housing is a $5.4 million increase over last year's budget of $7.4 million. This proposed budget also includes $500,000 to support a Durham County longtime homeowner tax grant program for residents at or below 30% of the area median income. The program would award grants to qualifying recipients to help reduce the amount of property taxes due. Forever Home Durham is our $160 million program creating affordable opportunities for renters and homeowners through new construction, property repairs, and essential housing services, we are building a more inclusive and livable community. Over the next several years, the $95 million affordable housing bond, combined with local and federal funding, will be used to invest in a total of $160 million to reach our goals that are listed on this slide. Two full-time employees will be added to support the affordable housing plan and the Durham Housing Authority will be one of our primary partners in implementing this program. We know the pandemic has created unprecedented challenges for our residents, our business owners, and our organization. Through a combination of local and federal funding, including $2.9 million from the CARES Act and $5 million in city funds, we've implemented various relief programs and plan to continue this support in fiscal year 21-22 with $50 million from the American Rescue Plan. As you can see on this slide, we funded or proposed to fund a variety of programs and services to support our residents during the pandemic and beyond. And these are just a few of them, and it is just the beginning. We've also funded a number of services and programs to support our business community. And this slide shows just a few of them. To support our transit operations, in fiscal year 2020-2021, the transit fund received $12 million in CARES Act funding and is expected to receive another $11 million in federal funding in fiscal year 2021-2022. During the pandemic, we suspended the collection of fares for bus service. As we continue to recover from the pandemic, I am happy to share that this additional funding will allow us to continue to provide fare-free bus service for all Go Durham riders through the end of the upcoming fiscal year. As I mentioned earlier in this presentation, during the past year, the city's total revenue loss due to COVID-19 is significant at over $8.1 million. This is due to losses in areas including solid waste and parking services, ballpark and convention center operations, and a drop in revenues associated with travel and recreation, which were impacted by the pandemic. To help the city's long-term recovery, I am proposing the use of American Rescue Plan funds to recover this lost revenue. We were fortunate that sales tax remained strong and offset some of the losses. And I am hopeful that Durham's local economy will come back even stronger than ever as we continue our collective efforts to return to normalcy in our post-pandemic lives. Our employees, our employees are essential if we are to implement the vision set forth in this budget. And we want to show these dedicated employees that we value their work and contributions to our organization and our community. These employees have worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic doing the critical work that keeps our city running, from emergency response to water and sewer management, 
the solid waste collection, and more. To reward this amazing effort, I am recommending the use of COVID-19 relief funding to provide 5% premium pay for our city's essential frontline employees, retroactive for fiscal year 2020-2021. Last year, due to the unknown of COVID-19, we suspended salary increases and bonuses to all of our employees. I am happy to report that we are recommending market rate salary adjustments and bonuses in fiscal year 2021-2022. General employees will be eligible for a 2% pay increase. Sworn personnel will receive increases based on their pay plans, with police receiving a 4% increase and fire receiving a 3.5% increase. All employees, both general and sworn, will also receive a bonus of $1,000 to $1,500 based on their salary levels. To meet the growing needs of our organization and community, this proposed budget also includes the addition of 34 new full-time employee positions in several areas. Some of the departments that must grow in order to support the needs of the community include solid waste management, fire, water management, neighborhood improvement services, and parks and recreation, along with our new community safety department. I also want to highlight several new positions that will help us to be a more equitable and inclusive organization and community. A new language access plan coordinator is proposed to help ensure equitable engagement and improve access to the city's programs and services for our community members with limited English proficiency. In January, City Council approved a new non-discrimination ordinance that will become effective on July 1st. The Human Relations Division will enforce the new ordinance, which continues to prohibit discrimination in housing. It adds employment and public accommodations and expands protected classes to include military status, sexual orientation, gender identity, and protected hairstyles. In addition to adopting the proposed budget, City Council will also soon adopt our, adopt our updated capital improvement plan, which guides our long-term capital projects, such as infrastructure and facilities. While the proposed CIP update will be presented during the upcoming budget work session, some of the new proposed capital projects are noted on the next three slides. Here is a short summary of our enterprise capital projects, including water and sewer, storm water, and solid waste projects. I am also proposing that we continue our capital commitments for our fleet replacement program, for street maintenance and repaving, and for maintenance to the city's capital structures. Additionally, one half cent of the proposed property tax increase, as noted previously, is proposed to be used to create new capital funding to support green infrastructure projects that will be developed through an equity lens after a process is developed in the coming year to identify and prioritize these new projects. Now that I've presented highlights from the proposed budget, it's time for our elected leadership and community members to take a closer look. City Council and staff will review the details at next week's budget work sessions on May 26th and May 27th, beginning at 9 a.m. each day. These virtual work sessions will be live streamed to our YouTube channel to enable as many people as possible to watch our departmental budget presentations. Our residents are encouraged to share their thoughts at our virtual public hearing, which will take place during the June 7th City Council meeting beginning at 7 p.m. We remain committed to transparency in the budget as well as in total operations. Therefore, the complete proposed budget is now available for your review on the city's website at Durham NC 
www.gov slash budget. I also want to encourage you, our residents, to continue to engage with us on our social media channels. We work hard to communicate what we are doing on these pages and want to engage with you there. Developing the budget is always a collaborative process. Relying on the groundwork of long-term financial and strategic plans, and at the same time, trying to predict what the future holds. Special recognition goes to our budget and management services team, along with all of our department directors for their leadership to ensure that our strategic plan guides and aligns with budget priorities as well as our growing community needs. I also want to recognize our public affairs team who always do a great job helping to develop this presentation every year. We have a lot of ambitious proposals and initiatives to make progress on our priorities and to continue COVID-19 recovery for our community and our organization. With this budget, and the support of our elected leaders, our employees, and our community members. I am confident that we can make real progress while exploring new approaches to our most pressing challenges. In the words of Amanda Gorman, let's embrace this opportunity to see the light and be the light so that we can create the best future for Durham. Thank you. budget address. Well done. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, um, before we, um, I'm going to uh, ask if there are any uh, comments. Of course, this is uh, just our first, uh, we've heard this officially the first time and we'll have a public hearing, uh, budget workshops and so forth. Uh, but before I ask if there are any comments by colleagues, I do have one person who signed up to speak on this who uh, is Ms. Hillary Ensminger. Uh, Madam Clerk, I do not see Ms. Ensminger. However, uh, do you in the attendees list? No, Mr. Mayor, I don't see Ms. Ensminger. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll ask Ms. Ensminger, we'll uh, let her know about the possibility of speaking, of, of emailing us or speaking at the public hearing. Thank you. Colleagues, um, I'm going to now ask if there are any brief uh, comments that you want to make uh, about uh, the city manager's budget address. I'll just start by saying uh, I one of the best things about this budget address is no surprises. Uh, Madam Manager, thank you for keeping us so well informed as we moved up through this process. Uh, I'm super excited about some of these new initiatives uh, and some of the continuing ones. The full funding of the the housing bond, the creation of the community safety department and staffing of that department, uh, the, the language access coordinator, uh, and there are many other uh, city council initiatives uh, that we, uh, there were so many details in the budget that you weren't able to mention, uh, but I really appreciate this. I'm excited about the green and equitable infrastructure plan. Uh, it just is just a super exciting budget and um, can't wait to Get into it a little bit more and pass this thing. Councilmember Freelon and then Councilmember Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, reiterate your words of affirmation and to thank City Manager Page for a wonderful presentation. Uh, I particularly like the um, uh, bringing in the poetry of Amanda Gorman. I thought it was very appropriate. And it's been a really, you know, we've talked about it already a little bit today, how difficult it's been over the past year for the city of Durham, but we could not be in better hands. Uh, and and I, I share your uh, divine optimism for Durham moving forward. Um, particularly, I'm excited about the transformation that you've talked about with the community safety department. And I'm curious, I, we'll talk about this, I'm sure next week, but I'm curious what that, intersection between that department and the community safety and wellness task force looks like and just excited about the future. So just wanted to thank you and congratulate you on a wonderful 
first address and I'm looking forward to voting on my first budget. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, uh, City Manager Page. Thank you, Council Member. I'm gonna throw down a, a challenge for you. I don't think anybody's ever written uh, a song about a city council budget. <laughs> I so, love it. Um, Only I'm, if you sing the hook. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there, thank you. Council Member Reese. Uh, I'm going to no comment that last suggestion, but what I will say is this. <clears throat> um, Mr. Mayor, um, it, one thing I have often noticed uh, in other government institutions is that when um, a new um, a boss comes in to uh, an organization, there's often a tendency uh, for that person to, or it takes a new leadership role, there's often a tendency to be careful somewhat timid uh, in your first set of proposals out the door, um, not wanting to step on toes or uh, try to get a better feel for the new job. Um, I'm thrilled to see uh, that our new city manager, Wanda Page, has swung for the fences in this budget. Uh, it, is, uh, it is an extraordinary presentation that we've received tonight. There's so much to celebrate about this. Um, uh, I'm not going to try to go into any of the specific details. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you and Councilmember Freelon touched on some of the most exciting parts also, but I will say maybe the thing I, I might be most excited about is that we're using uh, our federal relief dollars to make bus fares free through the entire fiscal year, through June 30th, 2022. And I will just say, colleagues, it's gonna be real hard, real hard, if if you expect me to vote to, re to create those fares again in a year and a half because uh because folks can be used to it it will have been two years we can figure out a way to do it in any event that's next but year's budget for this budget let me just thank the city manager that we hired to do this thing for doing this thing so well we're going to get into the details i'm going to spend a lot of time over the next week and a half digging through what i'm sure is a very lengthy many hundred page budget book that is now excitedly uh, downloaded on my computer right now um but let me just say thank you um for going big. Thank you for listening to our community and to what um, what our community needs. And thank you especially to our staff who has worked under <laughs> unprecedented uh, conditions uh, to produce uh, what could very well turn out to be the best budget I've seen in my time on the Durham City Council. So um, with that, I'll let other folks uh, talk because I could go on a long time and I won't. Uh, anyway, thank you very much and congratulations to City Manager Pitt. Thank you, Council Member. Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and thank you, Manager Page, for that fabulous presentation and for how incredible this budget already is. Um, I was really thankful for my standing desk that I got a few months ago because it allowed me to turn off my camera and do a little dance <laughs> while Wanda was speaking because I'm so excited about how incredible um, things are looking. And we did not, at la you know, last year at this time, we were really very deeply concerned about what this year's budget was gonna look like. And I think it's really, um, it really says a lot about the city, about our staff, um, about the work that this community has done over the last year that we are, um, that we are looking at such a fabulous set of new initiatives um, as we are. I'm so excited about the community safety department. Um, I'm really happy about us being able to afford to hire so many new folks. Um, I'm really excited that our, our staff are gonna get the raises that they so much deserve and that we weren't able to give last year as well as the premium pay um, bonuses from our federal money. Mm -hmm. I never want to charge a bus fare again um, I'm really, really happy about where we are and where we're headed. Um, and yeah, this this feels like one of the best budgets we've had. So thank you, Wanda. Um, thank you to your staff, to our budget staff, to all the folks who are working hard on this. And we're gonna dig in over the next few weeks to get this to the finish line, um, but it's gonna be great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Further comments, colleagues? Council Member Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Madam Manager, on tonight, just celebration. It was a fabulous uh, presentation uh, and a wonderful document. Uh, and I look forward uh, to delving. This was an important threshold 
uh, you cross tonight. And for those of us that have known you in this community for years, uh, timid is never a word we would have ever applied to you, uh, no matter your job description. So uh, you you did exactly what we expected you to do, to come out with a, with a roar uh, and with a bang. Um, I think ultimately our, our budget will be measured uh, not just by those whose voices are loudest or have the most access, but by those who are most impacted, who oftentimes don't have the organizational wherewithal uh, to have their voices echo uh, in City Hall. And I look forward to, to prodding and testing it for that. But this is a wonderful document. It, it captures, uh, I believe, the values of Durham. I think it's pointed uh, in the right direction. Uh, I don't particularly like this phrase, but they say the devil's in the details. So we will get into the details in coming days. But on tonight, this is a time for celebration and commendation to you and the entire staff. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, threshold crossing for you tonight. My congratulations to you uh, and your staff and my thanks. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, council member. Any further comments? Council member Freeman and then council member Caballero. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, thank you colleagues for covering all of the bases. I think I'm, I'm really excited about this WandaVision and uh, it's, it's just gonna, I'm gonna use that a lot. I, I just wanna say that I'm, I'm most excited about this office on, and I have to read it exactly as it is on a budget, I'm sorry. I, I moved right away from it as soon as I touched it. But it's, a, I'm sorry, the Office of Performance and Innovation of our Budget and Management Services Department. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful that the all the many pilots that we've been doing over the last few years have to land somewhere. And, you know, it's always a concern that we do one and done or, you know, that it starts and we don't finish. And I'm really grateful that you've managed to, to find a way to make sure that everything is landing and that you're asking for the staff that we need. I, I will just note there are probably a lot more staffing needs um, that aren't in this budget that I will be asking about. And then I also just know um, there are a few a few areas of concerns that I, that I know I've raised in the past, but I, I really wanna say that I know that this is the work that needs to be done. And I think similar to a comment that was made earlier, I think this is one of the best budget um, documents we've seen, uh, that I've seen since I've been on council. And I'm, I'm really excited about digging into the details and making sure that we're going to be attuned to, to meeting the needs of the folks who are um, marginalized or often left out of this. I know that the, the work ahead isn't just about just saying that we're gonna do it, but it's how we do it. And so um, I'm really, really gonna be digging in around the affordable housing area, just acknowledging that the $95 million bond is the start. And so just noting that there's gonna be a lot more work around that, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's ahead. So I really, really thank you. I'm looking forward to a, a time when we're doing a green bond um, on equity and uh, I'm just gonna throw all of my dreams and wishes into this WandaVision so that they can all come to me. Thank you, council member. Council member Caballero. Thank you, I'll be quick. Uh, Madam manager, thank you for an excellent presentation. I look forward to our hearings next week and um, I'm really, really excited. Thank you, council member. Thank you for your comments, colleagues. Madam Manager, you can see that your initial budget has been met with great enthusiasm. Uh, and we have some, we've got to buckle down, do some more work, uh, but I think we're in unanimous agreement. We're heading in a great direction. A lot of excitement about the initiatives that you've proposed. So thank you very much. And um, we are, we'll see you at the next, uh, we've got a couple budget hearings coming up very, very soon. and. Uh, Thank you so much, Madam Manager.